tinfoil hat. Oh, what the fuck are you guys even talking about? Global controls will have to be imposed. And a world governing body will be created to enforce them. Welcome to tinfoil hat. We, we, we go deep, homeboy. Eric, open your mind. Drink. Good morning, Swarm, and welcome to Tim Fall Hat. You know I am. You know I'm here to do. I'm here to rock. There we go. Joining me as always, my good friend and yours, Xavier Guerrero. What's up? And then on the ones and twos, to know him is to love his leather. <laughs> Jay Nice, Johnny Wood. Is that what? leather, bro? No, it's not. What is that? It's just I don't, a windbreaker. It's like a. It's like because it was raining it looks when like I a left the house. Leather windbreaker, but either no, way, it's, I'm pla- it's just like pla- you know, like a nylon sort of thing oh, for respect. the for the rain. It, we had this freak rainstorm in L.A., man. Yeah, oh, oh dude. Whoo. So like I, I I've been I had a whole bunch of documents on my patio, uh, and I'm like, okay, wh- Google weather is it gonna rain? Zero, twenty yeah. percent rain, you're fine. Pit pit pat pat pat. Yep. Oh, I have to run out. I'm just logging it in. Dude, I, you, I last Roger's night Roger's probably eating it all. Right <laughs> at now. Three a.m. when it started raining, I heard it, and I was like, oh shit, I have stuff like packages at my apartment, which is like twenty minutes across town. Oh, They're just no. sitting out, and so I had to drive across at town three morning, at three in the morning last night. If you gotta drive across town, three in the morning is yeah, the time. Fifteen to draw. minutes, dude. It's the yeah, only thirty time minutes. In LA, back no traffic. That's, that's Jack Bauer time, right? That's Jack. <laughs> Even Bauer. coming back, traffic was starting to pick up a little. But I, I was coming back around four, and it's traffic. You can see it just oh, starting yeah, to notch up. Yeah, at four up. o'clock, you're like, "Who are you people? Mexicans Why going to work? Why are you driving? Mexicans are going to work, dude. Who <laughs> cuts your grass at or six in the morning? Or people are coming home from coke runs. Yeah, it could be that. It could yeah. be either, oh, either or. It's right. A lot of like Audi A sixes, you know. So, so maybe coke. Maybe <laughs> a coke. A lot of blow out there. <laughs> people still doing blow dude. after all the fentanyl. Yeah. yeah. Like. The LA News is telling you don't do it, and people don't give a fuck. They don't get, you know why? Because chicks like to get weird on coke. Yeah. That's why everyone's doing well, have it. Have you seen in uh, England now? They have this sort of uh, what you said, like ethically sourced cocaine that that people are spending way more money on. I love that idea. <laughs> it's dude. these yuppies, you know, they're the one that want to feel good about themselves while snorting coke. I love eth. And what's it called? Eth- ethically sourced. Yeah. That's the best. So that means it does have fentanyl in it, right? Well, but also it means that it like the the laborers are paid fairly. <laughs> Oh yeah, they're tag- targeting the middle class. Oh yeah, is that you found it? Okay, yeah, yeah it's woke, woke coke. They call it. <laughs> woke coke. I love that, dude. I love it's that. A, okay, hold on. Drug dealers are targeting middle class users with an ethically sourced cocaine for two hundred pounds a gram to suit their quote vegan organic lifestyle. Dude, I mean, I don't like. I don't. I don't care. Vegans seem annoying, but I. I love the. I, I never thought of it from a coke picker perspective right i just thought like dude this shit doesn't have fentanyl in it right there should be like a little test you should be able to test if your coke has fentanyl that, i agree that. with that yeah well i think they do have fentanyl uh, tests actually do they really i think so i if know not invent that i think they might have it for like heroin or dude, something. if you're a good drug dealer give your coke with the fentanyl test to prove like look yeah, this is how good my shit is i was talking about that with some like coke dealers are the worst i mean drug dealers are the worst man it's like you're killing off your clients yeah i mean i gotta go to barney's beanery to get some drugs what is it from <laughs> uh, guys speaking of coke san diego you rocked Woo. uh bro I-, I drove down to san diego and i mean bumper the bumper from Los Angeles all really? the way to San Diego. Bumper oh, the whole way. The a two-hour drive How long it take? took four hours. Dude, and he, he got there drive. like 10 minutes before the show started. And I kind of messed up a couple of my jokes, even though the crowd was great, because I was just fried hoping to get there in time. But you guys came. You saw you kicked a whole lot of ass. Thank you to everybody who came to Tim Fall Hat Comedy. Sold it out a week early. Hey, man, we got some big shows coming. We got some big shows. We, we're going to be live in Dallas this Friday night. We have an 8 o'clock show and then a 10.30 show. 8 o'clock show is a stand-up show. 10.30 is uh, uh, Swarm Tank. So go check that out. And then the next day, we're in Oak. Okay, 
We're at Hyenas in Dallas this time. Usually we're in Fort Worth. This time we moved to Dallas. It'll be Dallas Friday the 30th, 8 p.m., 10.30 p.m. That's at samtriplee.com. And then the next day, we're at the Bricktown Comedy Club, and that's a 4 o'clock show. We now sell 420 sh- T-shirts that are only going to be available at the live show. You cannot buy them online, so, anywhere. I told you. Everybody that was there, I was like, it's not going to go on the website. Because they're like, he's going to put it on the website. Dude, no. I have every time I made something exclusive or limited, it's never been on the, the website. It was that time, and it is gone. And you can only get these shirts live at the uh, a 420 show. I'm debating if I'll sell them at the live shows. Uh, the night before, but they'll probably just be at those uh, OKC shows. So uh, catch a 420 show, grab a great shirt. So that was great. Uh, What else we got? Okay, a lot of big things are going on at Rockfin. Have you guys heard that Elks Jones is thinking about coming to Rockfin? Wow, no. That's a push. No. And yeah, that's a big, big push. Oh, dude, that's Mondo. Yeah, yeah that's that's some crazy stuff. Hold so on like, to your Rockfin, your Ray. Yeah, hold on, hold to, your on to your Ray oh, yeah. and get on your own server. That's all I got to say about that. I mean, you're going to have to have, oh, yeah. you're gonna have, to have ninjas, uh, Navy SEALs, uh, hackers, <laughs> everything just around your server yeah. the whole time. He's uh-huh. going to bring the FBI to yeah, Rockfin. Uh, they're, they're, yeah. <laughs> they're already there. They're already there. So, guys, I don't know if this dude, so I signed up for that that thing um, that gets you through the... That, oh, TSA. TSA, yeah, the clear? Clear. PSA. Yeah, the you're clear. supposed to get it for two weeks after. I haven't got mine, and it's almost three weeks. So oh, we'll weird. see. You went down to uh, down I went the down airport. To get done. Uh, oh, interesting. Did they do like a cavity search? What's the no pr- man? Protocol they there? didn't fist me at all. But what, what did they just ask you some questions and look just at your ID? asked me some questions. Did my prints? Took my eyes and all that. You don't stuff. feel weird? Oh, that, that see, that's why I haven't done it because I'm taking my eyes like this. I don't care. I mean, like, I mean, it doesn't matter. Yeah, to me, it's but a, it's sweet when you get to cut through that line. I have got it. Right? So oh, I do okay. an FBI check. All right. Okay. So I have got it. That's yeah. That's what we're waiting on. Okay. So. Daddy might be on a list that he already thinks he's on. You're one of those people like when the president comes to your high school, you're not allowed to show up to school that day. You know, <laughs> it's like, uh, Mr. Triple, you're gonna need to you stay, stay home. home. The okay. reason he got it was because we were running late, and Eddie Bravo showed in like he yeah, came in hot. Didn't ran even in take, like yeah. OJ in a Hertz commercial, you know, just hauling through. But That's I mean, cool. like, I don't, I'm not a present danger to anything. And then you already don't even like getting a. Uh, Getting searched. Yeah. You already asked for the, what, what is it called? I do. I opt out. Yeah, you can I, touch my nuts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, Rockfin is packed. You got Conspiracy Social Club with Brian Kale. You have Tim Fall Hat Premium. And guys, you guys are killing it on that. And then we also have uh, Broken Sim First Look. Yeah, we follow have, that. Uh, we're almost at 10,000 followers. We're so almost at, uh, uh, we're, um, we have uh, the greatest of all time. Yes. We will do that. We've yeah, been wanting we to do a lot that. To talk about. And then my good friend, Xavier Guerrero, has a show called We Don't Smoke the Same. And we just bang, dropped bang. two new episodes, so go check them out. Go and check it out. Support him. Is, is Have you made that your theme, or is it something else, actually? No, no. We don't have no theme. They won't, oh, they you, won't make dude, it you got to get some music I, to that. I, I need Sam him. to sing it in a studio. I, I got to be real studio. It. You'll do it in be real studio. We're in a studio right now. I'll send you the file. There we go. I told you I would do that, dog. I'm all about tech. Hey, that's what you we gotta, call you, motherfucking You got to put some like pitch correction on it, you know, make you sound like Kanye West. That would be oh, great. Uh, so auto tune, so yeah, auto tune. Yeah, yeah. I don't need auto tune this gift. Okay. <laughs> oh, by the we way, don't Anthony, Hinch, Anthony Hinchcliffe is on Rockfin too. He yeah, just dropped Tony his new Hinchcliffe, episode. Boom. So, so go check it out. Every hell, hell, the gang's all there. Okay. Uh, also, t-shirts, man. We got some great t-shirts for you. Shape shifting Jesus. Uh, the the baseball Tim Fall hat that people love. That's a that's a great looking shirt. Dude. You know, you gotta give Xavier. Yeah. I don't know what Xavier does on this show other than <laughs> making insanely awesome uh, t shirt design. Yeah. So thank you on that, course, Xavier. Thank you, thank, thank you, thank you. If it wasn't the Dodgers. <laughs> <laughs> font. I hey, would be all about it. The new Conspiracy Smoke Show is a good design. That wasn't mine either, though. That, that, that was a good design. So Conspiracy Smoke out. Show t-shirts for the ladies. And then we have there, and I, I'm working on a breakfast of chicken snake god with all of our faces on it. <laughs> I'm the chicken. You guys are the two snake heads. Is that hard to, is that hard to pin down? Uh, the like, It's, it's kind of hard to imagine that, right? Well, what you know what like? the hard thing is? is like, at first, he had the legs really close, and it looked like uh, I had a mangina. <laughs> 
<laughs> so then I had to move it out a little bit, and now it's just a two little two. So now it looks like I got a, a, a wide set gap, <laughs> right? So you I'm like, let's, let's find it. Let's find a little bit uh, yeah, in the yeah, middle there, yeah. and uh, so we're doing it, and, and it, that'll be available soon as well. So I know people are sending me designs. I have to be very particular about what I put out. I'd love to put out everybody's design. I just can't do it, but keep sending them. We'll keep doing it. And uh, yeah, dude, that's about it, man. Send them to Sam, though. Don't, because people, I got, I'm getting shit in the Discord for not sending, uh, not public. I don't have anything to do with the t shirts, guys. Yeah, send them to Sorry. me. Send them to X, marks the spot. I'll send, I'll send them, them to more. Xavier. Yes. Go hell. Yes. Yes, dude. Okay. So that's what we'll do. So that's uh, that's it. Anything else, guys? Oh, nah. no. You cool. want to see proof of ghosts in the studio? You can check out. Uh, check oh. out the broken new broken simulation. Sim. It's video. like burning up the charts. People are talking about it. Uh, if you love conspiracy, can't get enough. Conspiracy Social Club. There is new free episodes uh, available on the RSS feed. Just put in Conspiracy Social Club, and you can find them there. And if you like it, rate and review. Rate and review this show as well. Please help us out on that. And then the next thing is, um, what else? Oh, you know, the Unwanted seems to be kicking a whole lot of ass as well. So these are the things. Now, all of my content, all the video content for all my free shows available at samtriplee.com. I know it was down for a yeah, short what time. Was, it went down? I, I, something with, they had to renew something, so they okay. did it. They're all there. Tim Fall Hat, uh, Cash Daddies, um, you know, The Unwanted, what, uh, all the other ones are all there. Everything's there. So go check it out. And uh, anything else, guys? No. Nah. All right, man. Shout out me on Twitter, Johnny Woodard. Hit up Johnny Xavier. What's I yours? Love conspiracy theories in my inbox. It makes go. my day. I just read them all the time. Seriously, send them to me. Damn, that man. sounds like someone's asking for na- nudes. Yeah, it's <laughs> no. I mean, I'm not, I'm, not say, I'm not saying them. no to that either. But <laughs> I, especially like uh, I, I honestly, I'll sit there for hours and just like read what stuff people send me. Yeah. Like, all right, guys. So we have a really interesting uh, episode for you. It's a very complex episode about how mm. history is all a lie and that most likely this this um how would you say this timeline this human this humanity timeline is only about yeah. four thousand years old. No, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean the whole thought of like history is not real and Tataria is so complex. So history as we know it is not history real. as we know it. So I hope you guys can check it out and listen to it. We, we he he gives us a lot. I of will I will recommend you if you if possible wait for the video on this one. Uh, you know because, golly man, uh, there's a there's a lot. Yeah, there's the, you. He's got illustrations that. Uh, there's a lot. Maybe listen and then watch it later. Yeah, please, whatever. Just enjoy it. And he's a great guy. I hope you guys enjoy the episode and hope to see you in Dallas and Oklahoma. Oklahoma. <laughs> From the of now. All right, let's get into it. Super excited about this topic. Anytime we can get into history on the show, I enjoy. He is a independent researcher. Please welcome Ari Asulin. How are you, brother? Doing really well today. Howdy. Uh, I'm very happy. I, I got your last name correct. And <laughs> yes, whenever that happens, that's a good start to the week. <laughs> You know Absolutely. what I'm saying? So, Ari, for our uh, listeners who may not know you, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, amateur conspiracy researcher. I only got started in the last uh, four or five years. I'm sort of behind on a lot of topics, but I felt like I introduced some elements to the uh, to the th- theoretical that maybe haven't been covered too much yet, specifically when it comes to um, Saturnian cosmology, uh, life on Mars, and the mud flood event. Um, all right, which all right. are which are all very you know um, they're emerging topics still you know very like fresh and um, and people don't really know which direction to go in you know as far as conclusions or or what or why any of it. All right, I like it. This is uh, you like some of the uh, more uh, interesting topics in this. When you say you're an amateur, uh, what does that mean? An amateur conspiracy theorist. That means uh, no funding, no no um, you know. Um, Regular broadcasting subscriptions, any, any of the stuff that you know everyone else is doing these days. Try to be more professional. So you're 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 just doing it for the love of the game. Yeah, me and my little crew on Discord, just people that want to you know figure this out like a I big lo- puzzle. I love it. So five five years ago, you started going down this rabbit hole. What kicked off this journey that you're on? 
Well, um, I would say around 2012 to 2014, the world changed considerably, maybe for a lot of people. And um, a lot of new stuff was popping up on Facebook for the first time. Videos that couldn't be explained. Like um, we all know what's happening with the pandemic. We have all, heard all kinds of theories. However, back in 2014, we saw these videos of like uh, truckloads of coffins being shipped over. And, and it's just, you know, we need answers now. People start looking for answers. And um, specifically Nibiru caught my attention. The Nibiru cataclysm theory. Could that have been the explanation? for why everyone's acting so bizarre all of a sudden in 2012 to 14. Is it because, you know, like in the movies, this asteroid's going to hit us and we've got to, the government's got to lock us down and shut us up so that for our own good, right? That's what they told us. So, you know, I, I looked at th seriously and I realized after about a year that I'd fallen for an elaborate um, controlled opposition trap that the Bureau of Cataclysm was actually based on um, something else and that the people who were behind it were sort of, they've already been exposed, you know, and just a lot of people weren't catching up. They reintroduced it again in 2014, and a lot of people didn't know about it, were just blown away. So to have fallen so so hard for such a theory, you know, and a lot, I had a lot of friends and family kind of look at me strange after that. Yeah. I decided, I decided, well, the question I asked is still the right question. Everyone started acting really weird in about last 10 years, from the world we knew till 9-11, till post-9-11, till what we're in now. There has to be some kind of explanation for it all, you know, something better than um, the ones that they give us. If it's not in the bureau, then it's got to be something else. So, so that, hold on real good. quick. You said something about uh, controlled opposition, but it was really based on something else. And then you did you moved on from that. Oh, what sorry. Was, yeah. What was it based on? Well, um, the Nibiru theory um, is based on uh, ancient testimony of the, a planet of the crossing called Nibiru and many other names. And this planet of the crossing, as it appears in, in the Bible and other places, um, they suggested that it is coming back, you know, and is going to hit earth. Right. That is the Nibiru cataclysm theory. But absent of the cataclysm itself, Nibiru does have a source and explanation. It is the planet of Venus and it is the planet of the crossing because it appeared as a crossing shape in the past in Saturnian cosmology specifically and as a crossing between two other rock planets. So I can get more into that later, but um, Saturnian cosmology explains where this Nibiru idea comes from. And then somebody, I would call them a controlled opposition, that, that one lady who um, started the pole shift website, who killed her dog in 2002 or four. I should just grab it, Nancy something. Let me just grab it real fast. Nancy Laker. We got We're dog and people here. Yeah. I'm sorry. We're dog yeah. people here. I'll fight this. Big thing. time. Big time yeah, yeah. dog people. <laughs> um, yeah. This, uh, she froze it in 1995 and then she killed her animals, her pets, in preparation for it, obviously, in 2002. So um, that's where the Nibiru cataclysm came from, from this lady and her sources. And it's been debunked and it's been, you know. So, so anyway, that Nibiru cataclysm just got me into this. I need to know what, what you know, are the secrets? What are the answers? If there is something causing everyone to act you know, crazy in modern times. I'm going off topic here, but that's where it started. There is no topic. There is only conversation. <laughs> um, yeah. So, so you're really new into this. You're into, you know, one of my best friends, and uh, I'm blessed to do gigs with him. Xavier Guerrero and I just did a, a gig with a guy named Eddie Bravo. Eddie Bravo has 10th Planet Jiu Jitsu. That was kind of based on. And, uh, near Abu, right? right. Uh, and then he's now a flat earther. Have you ever looked in to, because we're talking a lot about planets and stuff here yeah. uh, on your journey. Have you looked in to the theories that are yes. in fact? Absolutely. Uh, like I said, I, I'd like to prefer to call myself an amateur because I actually started from scratch with all these for flat earth right after Nibiru theory fell apart. I was considering maybe flat earth was the explanation for you know, why the government suppresses knowledge, history, you name it. Um, the, the flat earth um, theory proposed an extremely simple look at the universe, just straightforward up to down, you know, God's on top, devil's on the bottom, or other variations of it, and that everything can be explained that way. Unfortunately, it comes with a series of contradictions, but more importantly to me, it's not a satisfying explanation for our history, human history, nor is it a predictor hypothesis for events coming up in the future. Um, for example, uh, what is NASA doing? NASA these days has been 
just screwing with us. They're not even trying to be serious. They're completely <laughs> faking this, faking that, throwing Jeff Bezos up there, saying this is real. And it's just so uh, unsatisfying, right? So, so like I said, these theories in Flat Earth point to that. They say they've got to be hiding something. Are they hiding Flat Do you flat feel, Earth or, real quick, I'm, do you yeah. feel like you live in a haunted house? Think about what hmm. a haunted house is, right? You go yeah. through this elaborate production that in that moment you want, you believe this is a real house and it's really haunted. I know you think it's you're obviously you're all at a haunted house, but there's elaborate suspension of disbelief, right? Yeah. So, so when we see what's going on with like uh, Jeff Bezos, you know, uh, Virgin <laughs> and all these billionaires going to space. And now we have the CPR, the, the PCR yeah, yeah. tests uh, <laughs> aren't, aren't right. I mean, is all of this a giant haunt, haunted house? Is it a giant? I think it's deliberately confusing. They just want to muddle, muddle everything around <laughs> us. It's like you say, we're living in a movie. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 so crazy. And you're like, well, why would they do that? And the question is, why would they do that? And I think the why? answer is, oh, you got an answer? <laughs> no, no, that's the question. That's the question to ask on these theories. We don't have to conclude that these theories are right or wrong, but we go, I go back to that question. You know, space, what are they hiding about space? Went through that Apollo mission, which a lot of people think was a hoax. Um, the details of it are lost. Though. Most people don't talk about details. For example, how they faked the part of the halfway trip to the moon, the halfway part. Uh, they said they were halfway to the moon. Here's the far Earth in the distance. And then they showed how that whole thing was being faked by a mirror. So the big, big question there is, why would you fake being halfway to the moon? These questions have to be answered. The answer, I believe, is that the thing they're hiding about space is that we can't really go into space. Just like the flat earthers say, actually, we can't go into space because we can't survive in space. Uh, the Earth keeps us alive, and as soon as we pass through that, um, that um, Brooklyn, uh, no. Van Allen Belt. Van Allen Belt. Thank you for thinking for me there. Van Allen Belt. As soon as we do that, we're dead. We're not going to get through those belts. So they had to fake the part beyond the belts. Could so the Van the Allen flat earthers? Go ahead. Could the Van Allen Belt be the dome? Right, see, see, we're plugging these things together. So people say, oh, that's the firmament, right? You can't go past the firmament because, you know, God wills it. Uh, well, let's take a look at that, you know, in pieces. First of all, the Van Allen Belt is described differently as the firmament in the Bible, which is described as an ancient sea in the sky. The abyss actually was called, and it looked like a sea, a sea that actually parted and turned red and all kinds of stuff. A lot of references to the sea in the sky. And that sea, you can see the stars through it. So right there, we have a reference point for the firmament not being exactly the same thing as the Van Allen belts. Van Allen belts being agreeably invisible. We can't see them. Um, so going back to the theory, uh, if NASA is faking that we can't go into space past the Van Allen belts, does that point to flat Earth being the truth? Or is it possible that NASA saw this coming a long time ago in the 60s, people calling, it, calling them on all of this, and they had to come up with what is called a controlled opposition. Anytime the opposition gets too threatening, they push their controlled element in the center, and then everyone who hears about it thinks, oh, those flat earthers, you know, those Westboro Baptist church people, those, wow. they marginalize them as just a thing that is despicable, rather than considering what they had to say. Well, I mean, they're protesting dead people's uh, uh, funerals, and, and, you know, totally. you brought up uh, controlled opposition. Isn't there this whole theory that, like, as soon as this one dude died, they they basically disappeared like no how were they just getting around everywhere and all these groups would show up and supposedly somebody was funding it and now he's no longer with us and they don't tour anymore <laughs> yeah it's it's a controlled it's like funded by a corporation it's fake they're bust around it's not as spontaneous as it appears to be yes we're, we're plagued by these today uh that you know that um that shaman guy he, he appeared at many of the rallies i went to in arizona and he was trying to ruin our rally. He was trying to make it look like a joke when we were trying to stop the steal and so forth. So, oh, you say Viking guy? The guy with the buffalo yes. uh, horns? Yeah. That guy. Okay. I called him the control opposition to his face. Back then, uh, I have a video of that. I just got to find it. What was his response video. to that? Do you recall? Um, <clears throat> he started yelling as soon as Daniel stopped talking. He said, um, uh, you know, the government is lying to us. Uh, we need to get to the truth of it all. I said, what, what is your truth? Tell me your cue drop. And he said, time travelers have gone back and changed history. I said, I'm sorry, I don't believe in time travel. Give me another explanation. He literally walked away from me. 
He walked in circles as a bunch of people surrounded me and started asking me questions. It was a crazy day. But that's a perfect example of controlled opposition. They're not there to talk or debate. They do have a purpose. They're there to ruin everything. The flat earthers were there also. And we kept confronting them and saying, we just need to know that you care about the vote integrity thing. You know, that thing, the reason we're here, stop the steal. And they're like, the earth is flat. And they're like, okay, fine. You know, that, that's not good. That's, it's the, the media cameras are pointing at them and at Horns Boy, Shaman. And that not at not the us, not the rest of the real protesters. Anyway, that's controlled opposition. Well, that happened recently with uh they were doing this Medicare for all thing. Uh mm. rally, Jimmy Dore was a part of it. They were like having rallies all over the country. And even though I, I am for everybody having, you know, being able to access health care, I don't think Medicare for all is gonna solve that. Mm -hmm. But I respect anybody who is trying to push their a grassroots uh, uh, movement, even though I don't agree with it. But so supposedly this woman was like talking about Medicare. And then as soon as she went to Julian Assange, they cut her mic. Of and course. the notion was like, well, this isn't a Julian Assange rally. Course, yeah. This is a Medicare for all, which is kind of along the lines of what Ari was just talking about. Right. Because Julian Assange might be a real deal, but bringing him up conflates the current protest hey everybody i want to tell you about our new sponsor tbowbodywear.com that's tbow underwear that's right go to tbowbodywear.com use the promo code tinfoil okay their underwear is awesome i have it on right now that's how much i love it okay their underwear was developed and tested by 400,000 men, okay? Tebow underwear is developed by a community of cons customers to improve previous versions and develop new versions that are through their online platform, okay? Tebow underwear is extremely soft, and trust me, it is comfortable, well cut for the most flattering look. Yeah, man, your junk is gonna look power huge, and we could all use that here. My proud six inches never look better. This is because so many customers gave their opinion to make them better than ever, okay? Tebow, un Tebow is a leader in community-led production of their men's underwear, and they're leading the movement to have this as the future of all clothing production, okay? Tebow is pronounced Tebow, just like Jason Tebow, okay? <laughs> if you love Jason Tebow, you're going to love this underwear, okay? Tebow underwear offers a superior cut, bamboo material that is softer and more durable than your average underwear. Uh, additionally, a cool fact, bamboo uses 20 times less water and cotton fabric, which makes it, contributes to sustaining the environment, okay? Dude, a lot of great stuff. So here's what Tebow's offering, okay? Get 20% off your next purchase at tebowbodywear.com. That's T-B-O-bodywear.com and use the promo code TIN. Foil, okay, that's T Bo T B O bodywear.com promo code tinfoil. So let's get into this, Ari. Let's talk about this because I'm really excited. You know, I always get asked, what is the greatest conspiracy out there? And you know, I get into some simulation talk, like I get I get into universe one universal consciousness, but that's like there this one my one buddy was like, that's not really a conspiracy. I go, okay, and I go. Well, how about this? All history is a lie. And that is my belief. It is, uh, you know, uh, just lie upon lie upon lie. And if so, anything, it's one sided. If you're going to argue, if you're going to argue, you can just it's at least say it's told one sided. By the victors. Yeah. It's told by those who control all the money to make the, to basically make it's the textbooks trash. and create the curriculum for people to hear. All right. So what's going on here? Uh, sorry, we're you hearing the audio there. I wasn't sure if audio was coming through. Or not. It's coming through, brother. When you uh, okay. when you when you when you click share, you have to uh, select uh, share computer sound uh, with that. So okay, I don't need audio. I just wanted to make sure it's coming through. Yeah, it's so, not. Um, it's not though. Is what I'm saying. Uh, we're not hearing it. If we're meant does to be hearing something, does this video have audio? If you're saying the video yeah. has audio, we're not getting it. Yeah. I know, and I'm muting it. Don't worry. I don't okay. want the audio to come right. through. Oh, okay. <laughs> talking about it. Yeah, don't worry. So, uh, yeah. So how do you lie about history? That's a big question. First of all, we all agree that history is a lie. There's, there's completely official versions of it that don't agree with each other, right? The six-day creation version completely disagrees with uniformitarian theory. Um, and there's just no middle ground at all, aside from a couple of weird coincidences. Um, and then and they got like an alternate theory, Saturnian cosmology. Why is it called cosmology? Because... 
cosmos or structure of the universe is basically being defined by, by Saturnian cosmology. It's different from what we're told uniformitarian cosmology is based on gravity and billions and billions of years, uh, black holes and Big Bang theory. And then also creation theory or six day creation theory, which essentially uh, follows God's will and doesn't have any kind of causality between events. One event doesn't cause the next. So Saturnian cosmology, as you can see in this video here, this is by David Talbot in 1996, and he's showing a very crude version of what the first memory of Earth might have looked like. Um, this, uh, I described this in detail in my video. I'm just going to go briefly. Uh, what you're seeing up here is Saturn as a, as a fixed planet in the north pole of Earth. It does not orbit. It does, it does not set. It's just always up there. However, Earth itself is rotating, and there is a difference between light and day because the sun, the actual sun of the solar system, is hiding behind Saturn. So details aside, this first memory, completely different from um, you know, the ones that were taught in school. So is this what they're hiding? So, so that's, a, that's the question. What, how do you lie about history? What is the point of lying about this? What, what do you gain from it? Um, the first thing you gain is uh, by hiding, what people, um, hiding where people came from, you can tell them where they came from. You can make up their history. And, and by doing that, you basically control their future. There's a lot of quotes, a lot of people have said this. This history tells us that we, we inherited this earth recently, very recently, uh, on my count, maybe 4,000 years ago or less, that we humans have endured uh, cataclysm after cataclysm during a primordial time when this planet was not stable. It was being formed. And, um, and our testament to seeing these events in the sky as archetypes, writing down as icons, writing them as clip, as um, as cave art, and and, um, and many other forms. Um, we have to say that's not spontaneous art. That's actually the first memory, and all the memories afterwards, leading all the way up till today. Actually, this is where we came from. Actually, this is what this version of cosmology tells us. Okay. That, go ahead. Okay. So we need to have an explanation of what we're for because there's a lot of people who are listening to this. Mm -hmm. that may not know what's going on. So right. what what I'm seeing on the screen right now for those who are listening at home is it looks like an ancient pillars and there is a uh, a yellow object which I'm going to assume is the sun. Is that the sun? Well, yeah, I mean, it's quite real fast. Uh, the biggest object there is that's Saturn actually. And it's a big round sphere without rings. It doesn't have rings yet. In front of Saturn is Venus. And one second, let me back up here. In front of Venus is Mars. So you got Saturn, then Venus, then Mars, and then us down here, Earth, in the middle. Um, Venus um, appears as different shapes. It constantly changes shapes. Saturn is constantly a sphere, a giant sphere in the sky, and never changes shape. And Mars is oscillating between Venus and Earth. Every time it comes close to Earth, an outer layer of Mars breaks apart and hits the Earth's atmosphere, causing uh, debris, lightning, and every kind of cataclysm, you name it. Um, after that, Mars re recedes back up into the sky as a giant pillar, a giant cosmic mountain in the sky. These, um, it really helps to just watch the video because you know, using your imagination, it's almost impossible to visualize this memory. It's very different from anything we see today or anything we're told is even possible. So, well, the, the problem with just watching it is that we have people listening, so I have to describe right, right. to them yeah, totally. what's going on. So, so what you're saying is, Okay, so there's a lot going on in this video. Okay, yes, we want to have a, a we want we have to have a real breakdown of this video for those who are right. Right. It. So what? Because I've I've heard this story that you know um, Saturn was a much bigger object in our sky that mm -hmm. in the past than it is now, which is where Saturn worship comes from, Centennialia, right? Am I? Am yes. I wrong that that's where we have right. this uh, religion, which is now for those in the know are believed to be a lot of the dark arts occultics that are, are, are doing a lot of stuff to, uh, uh, to this, to humanity right now. Right? Like there's this right. real belief that th this, I love this. I could talk black cube every uh, day for yeah. the rest of my life and it would still not be enough. People, but this yep. is where black cube Saturn worship comes from. 
Right. Exactly. And so, if this, so go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. So, so this is over time, but what you're, so in that video that you showed us, cause we got to really break that video down. So we understand what we're watching. So Saturn is what looked like the sun. Is that what you're saying? Right. Saturn is what looks like the sun. Then, in, then the, then there's what in front of it? Venus is in front of it. It's a gas plant. So it's constantly changing, changing shape. So, and then this red ball that we see coming for front of us is that is Mars. Correct. That's Mars in front of Venus, the apple of the eye or, or many other references. Okay. So Mars hurls towards space. Is that what, is this what we're meant to believe? Hurls towards well, the earth. I didn't properly define this cosmology. So let me just do that real fast. Okay. The, the idea of the collinear configuration is that all of the planets were in one straight line. And that if you look at them from earth, you'll see, Mars, Venus, and Saturn lining up completely in the center. So that has to be explained by some physics. The physics of that is that the Saturn system, as it existed before the first memory, contained Earth um, and a whole lot of plasma gas, primordial material. When Saturn connected with the sun of this solar system, it exploded. All of that plasma was electrically charged and, and, and exploded into a giant... Um, a giant, a gas giant, essentially. This first explosion created the planet Jupiter. The second explosion created the planet Venus, much smaller. And as these gas giants were forming, they also formed a straight line pointed directly at the sun. The sun was feeding them energy, and they were, um, and they were forced into a, um, a linear configuration like batteries connected north to south pole, essentially. Um, a tremendous amount of energy was streaming through all of the planets and changing them considerably. Um, Saturn sh uh, turns into its own gas giant shape. Um, Venus um, constantly changes shape due to the energy that's moving through it. Mars oscillates because it's a rock and the energy is forcing it to, to move towards the Earth and then shed its shell and then back towards Venus. And then the Earth itself is also growing. All, all the plants are receiving all this energy. All plants are growing in a different um, scale and different speed. Mars is growing slower, or sorry, faster than Earth, and on on life on the on Mars is growing at a bigger rate than life on Earth. So essentially, in the oldest stories in North mythology in the Bible, you'll find stories of giants. These giants or Nephites or Nephilim came from these other realms, planets essentially, in the collinear configuration that received energy from the sun at a much different rate from Earth, and thus thus grew in size and scale, and became giants compared to people on Earth. When this whole collinear configuration fell apart, the planets broke away into their separate orbits that we know today, and any uh, life that exists on each realm also became a breakaway civilization, which is why I believe that there is life on Mars, there was life on Mars, there has always been. It shares our history and it shares, you know, it, people traveled between the, the realms. In, in several mythologies in the past. All right, guys, today's show is brought to you by our good friends at Super Speciosa. Speciosa. That's right. The makers of the finest Kratom products in America, a.k.a. the Super Leaf, that the, tread, that the feds have tried, yet thankfully failed to ban. Okay, just think about it. Why would they want people having the ability to take one product that has so many benefits? When big pharmaceutical can profit by hooking you up on multiple expensive prescription drugs. It's fucking nuts, dude. It's just like, it's so obvious what they're doing. And everyone's like, yeah, what can you do? I'll tell you what you can do. Fight back. Go to the Indies, man. Go to nature. Go to the natural leaf, man. Okay? It's great. Have you ever tried Kratom? Absolutely, yeah. It, what the, do you think the, of the, it? The, it's it's shockingly effective. I mean, you you think something over the counter like this, you know, you you think maybe it doesn't have shady great shit. Well, just that everybody it, would it, know, it, right? It, it wouldn't work, yeah. Right. You know, and it absolutely uh, does what it says on the tin. I mean, it's it's absolutely effective. Yeah. And, and, and they're trying to stop it because you know what? Mood you benefits. can't profit off of natural leaf. Okay. They're trying to keep keep you down, so you got to take their stupid ass drugs when there's a natural leaf out there. Okay. So this is what I want you guys to do. So give it a try. Give it a try. Okay. Go to get superleaf.com slash Sam and get 20% off your entire order. And if you can if you're not completely satisfied, no problem. Super Speciosa. Okay. 
Kratom is backed by a money back guarantee. Go to GetSuperLeaf.com slash Sam. Promo code Sam for 20% off, dude. Johnny's tried it. XG's tried it. They know it works. And if you need help, try it, dude. Try it. And just, hey, man, it's got a money back guarantee, dude. How great is that? Can't beat that. Can't beat that. So, again, go to GetSuperLeaf.com slash Sam. Promo code Sam for 20% off, okay? This... These products and statements have not been evaluated by, by the FDA and are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any diseases or illnesses. And you know what I say? Fuck the FDA. Who gives a shit? They're bond sold by big pharmaceuticals. And you know what? Give it a shot. Go to GetSuperLeaf.com slash Sam, promo code Sam, 20% off. Now, is so that it, is quick break down there. Is it your, anyone have questions right now? <laughs> So is it of your belief that these planets are realms? Um, because people are so small in describing uh, what they were seeing back then, and they're primitive. They did not really know what they were seeing. They didn't call them planets because they didn't take up uh, properties of planets. They appeared different in different realms. For example, the north part of Mars was the most, most perfect place to be. It was where the energy was stable and it was the highest place you could set foot. It was most likely where Atlantis was formed. The south side of Mars, the same planet, um, called uh, Nibelheim in um, Norse mythology, let me grab that, um, so I have it ready, um, was, a, was a cold place. And it was on the same planet, it was on Mars, but it was on the south side was a cold realm and named differently from the north side of Mars. So as you can see, each realm wasn't exactly a planet, but it was described as, as locations that had their own properties. The southern hemisphere was Mercury, the hottest location of all. And if you live there, your, your skin would eventually turn black. And if you couldn't stand it, according to North mythology, you wouldn't be able to live there. You'd eventually leave. So, pretty cool. That is interesting, dude. This is very interesting. And, and is it of your belief that these realms still exist to this day? Um. One second, let me grab the Rome picture. I just I can't find it for some reason. It's here. Oh, there it is. Jurassic. Okay, this is what I was trying to talk about. Um, so these realms were the memory of this collinear configuration. When it broke apart, the planets changed considerably. Um, most of them, you know, you can't even live on anymore. Uh, uh, Saturn and Jupiter are in the outer solar system. Mars appears uninhabitable, but I do believe that you can live in it on the inside. So these realms are all gone. Mars doesn't have a North, a north Atlantis and a South uh, called Jotunheim anymore. Those those realms, you know, have changed into something else. When you say there's like beings in Mars or people are living, you mean like actual like human beings, like other like or aliens or bacteria? At, at breakaway human civilization. Now they might look totally different from us. And a lot of people say, you know, they're reptilians or something because they possibly have say cold blood or slimy skin or some crazy attribute. But, but the point is that they're still human and they're still of our species. Now, why would they be so different? Well, different realms breed different properties, but let's go back to Earth real fast. If you look at the great Tatarian empire, the Roots Horde empire, if you look at all those references, I'm not sure how much you guys dealt into that, you will see that there's plenty of references right here on Earth of humans that looked very different from us. Either they lived in mountains or swamps or they're hairy or they're giants or something. So there's a lot of references for different looking humans. And on Mars, the conditions are different. Okay. So you think Earth's history is possibly only 4,000 years old? Yes. And why do you believe that? Um, <clears throat> as, the, um, as the Saturnian cosmology provides us with sort of a outline of a timeline, though I haven't found any art, any authors that know for sure when these dates occurred, they do occur in sequence. One happens, one effect, one event affects the next event. Um, the, the evidence that I have personally, that makes me believe that it's been about 4,000 years is that our calendar has changed its length of year several times in history. Uh, right now, the calendar is 365 days. Um, not too well ago, it was 360 days, and before that, it was it was uh, as short as 225 days per year. That is a much faster orbit than we have today. It is faster rather than slower, which tells us 
at something in the physics which caused a faster orbit in primordial times and a slower orbit now. It's quite different from what they would say. Newtonian physics would argue that the, the larger the orbit, the slower it would be. Um, electric universe theory, which is the basis for Saturn cosmology, electric universe describes that energy is passing through every object in the universe, even if it's invisible, through Birkeland currents. And if you have more energy passing through a planet, it'll cause that planet to orbit quicker. The same is true if you pass more energy to an electric engine, the electric engine will rotate faster as well. So um, again, this is totally in stark contrast to the cosmology that they teach in school, but um, led me to believe that we're actually dealing with a very short history, under 4,000 years. First half of it was all cataclysm. Last thousand years was all human history. And that if we were to understand that, we will know exactly why we're fighting today and what we're fighting about. It's actually tied right there into that okay. recent human history. So, so the human history that we understand right now is only 4,000 years old. Okay, but okay. There, there was something before that, and then a cataclysm happened, and then a new I, system I, started? I would describe the first memory as the first time that anyone on this planet or in this solar system was capable of memory or wanting to even record a memory. So before that, before the first memory, we're talking about no life existing here or on Saturn anywhere in this solar system. Other solar systems, sure. But this solar system, this one is ripe and ready for a new plantation of new planets. That, that plantation was the Saturn um, brown dwarf system, as it's, it was called, proto-Saturn brown dwarf system. And as it approached the sun, it sort of just gave birth to the solar system. Then you had the life. Then you had the first memory. And now we're, we're all fighting over how long that timeline actually is. 4,000 years old. Yep. I so interesting, dude. I mean, I do believe everything is. I I do believe history is a lie. I'm just trying to piece this all together. I I absolutely. So there's no memory before the plants lining up. Is that what you're telling me? There's no memory. That's the first official memory. Uh, some authors will disagree with me, but um. At what what I'm looking at is that every civilization seems to have the same memory. And if that's the case, then they all seem to agree that we're discussing the creation moment or most moment of creation, either by natural forces or by God's hands, starting at that specific moment. And before that moment, that's before creation. It's something else. No memories. So if every civilization has the same memory, a lot of them attribute it to God, um, is it possible that um, the timeline is correct, but the reasoning is different? As it turns out, there's plenty of indigenous cultures in this planet who believe that timeline occurred without the necessity of a creator god. One example, again, would be the Tatarian Rus Horde Empire, which was polytheistic, and they saw each planet as a god. None of them were in charge of the universe or creators. Saturn was the first god, the one that birthed the rest of the planets, and then Saturn, Kronos, gobbled up all of his children. And then the children intervened. Zeus burst out of his stomach and, and saved the other planets. And there's this whole story there. And all of the civilizations on Earth seem to agree with the basic elements of those stories, maybe not the conclusions and not, not you know, the dogma behind it, but the timeline. And so if that's the case, then yeah, the, the creation started in, in the first memory, essentially. Before that, like I said, this solar system was something else. It's possible that planets do have a, a, um, a lifetime. You know, after a while, they lose enough resources um, to sustain life and move to the outer orbits of their solar system, leaving the inner solar systems empty and positively charged and just a huge magnet for life to just gather and just start over again. So if that's the case, then yeah, we're talking very short timeline. I'm still trying to figure out how it's 4,000 years. Johnny? I'm thinking mm -hmm. dinosaurs. No, right. there's no dinosaurs. <laughs> Maybe yeah. there's dinosaurs. Let me, grab the, let me grab the uh, timeline here on my site. Okay. Uh, here's, the, here's the confusion part, and I better get into this because, um, you know, uh, we're, we're not, we didn't cover um, modern history from year zero, year one, until now, 2021, right? Okay. Um, a lot of people think that modern history is essentially 2,021 years old. 
Fumienko and you know Eastern people tend to say no, it's more like a thousand years old, and that the added a thousand years to the timeline is known as the fan- phantom timeline hypothesis. You guys covered that one? No, I've heard they've had they've added years. Right. So we're looking for the lie now. You know, this is going to be elaborate and and and, um, and uh, deliberate. Deliberate lie by historians for the purposes of power and control and stuff like that. They're going to add years to the timeline to say things have always been there. Um, for example, on um, uh, Fumienko again, uh, when he discusses last thousand years, he tends to re-reference the timelines when things happened. Magna Carta, he does not believe occurred in, in 1225. He believes it's a much more recent document, almost you know, maybe 200 years ago, and that they pushed the Magna Carta back 800 years to make it look like there was a representative parliamentary system in place in Europe and other places when there wasn't. It's a pretty new idea. Uh, just stuff like that. Those, that. That's the kind of lie that we're looking for. So in that case, what can we cut out of the official timeline? Most people seem to agree that around 4077 BC, that's where creation started. Here's some other dates. You got 5969 um, Antikian, Antikian, and then go all the way down to Judaic, you got 3,600, 3,761 uh, BC was the creation date. And I know this because I remember I was born and raised Jewish. And I remember they had a different calendar, which shows exactly how many years old the earth is. So how, what, um, what year is in the Jewish calendar? Um, you got two Judaic calendars. Uh, like I said, 3,761. And then we're in like year 6,000, something like that. Uh, let me just grab it. What year is it? Oh, I what see. year is it? In Judaic calendar, it is 5,781. That's the year we're in right now. <laughs> and check this out. What year is it? I mean, that's in- Louis C.K.'s joke about how Christians won because we it, we go by the Christian calendar. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, China's been well, around um, way longer. We don't give a fuck about their calendar. Right. So Persian calendar, the year is 1,400 right now. Yeah. What it's year 20, is it in 21. China? Say what? What year is it in the Chinese calendar? No, gee, I don't know that one. Like when uh, did they decide, they, like, this is your one? Now, Chinese, they uh, they followed the Jesuits, um, their entire empire. And those guys, they did that Julian calendar uh, and the, um, the Gregorian calendar. I'm sorry. They, they, I'm not, wouldn't be surprised if China follows our international year calendar. Right, right, right. But, I mean, isn't there a Chinese year and then there's our, uh, the Western year? Right, I found five different Chinese calendars on Wikipedia alone, so... I don't even know which one is the indigenous one. Dude, time is a motherfucker. It's made up. Yeah. Time's made up. Right? So I've heard a lot of this that you've said. I've heard different parts of this, you know, and, and how these this this Saturn worship is basically behind all these dark arts motherfuckers who are, like, pushing this agenda right now. Yeah, they actually want us worshiping their gods without us realizing it. If they can pull that off, and they have, then you know, boom. Let me uh, let me get back to my question real fast. You know, how to get four thousand? Um, most people agree that golden age, you know, ends ends after about you know eight hundred years, which passed quickly. Those years were short. They passed quickly and end violently. Every indigenous religion agrees um, that it was a violent end. Great deluges, one or three of them, depending. Um, and that humanity was cast out of the garden and all that, and they didn't know why. So each religion ha- comes up with different reasons. Uh, the Roman slash Bruce Horde Tatarian Empire religion um, believed that it was just the gods warring with each other, and they had no regard for humanity. And of course, uh, Western Reformation style Christians believed in the Creator God, who deliberately is punishing his creation because he's unhappy with it over and over. <laughs> you know, can't seem to be happy with anyone apparently. Um, <clears throat> so all of that stuff lines up. Uh, we have cataclysms, uh, Venus attacks Earth, Mars attacks Earth, Jupiter intervenes as the original savior, and then Jupiter dies, disappears. All, all these stories, which I won't get into huge detail of, um, which have correlation, like I said, all up until the point of around 600 BC, when I believe there was one more giant cataclysm, one more giant change of the Earth's calendar. And after that point, no more cataclysm ever again. If I'm right about that, 686 BCE date, then that should be the real year zero. And from 686 BCE all the way up until 1000 
CE. That period of time, 1800 plus years, is a deliberate lie, a, a manufacture, fabrication. That's where I got 4,000 years from. So I could be off. It's, it's a really low ball bet, honestly. But um, thinking of this in the terms I do as deliberate lies, as gaining power from lying about history, yeah, they would they would go as far as they could. They would um, they would make history seem as long as possible, like it was always there. The empires would be ancient; they're not recent. And all of the crimes occur, uh, that the deep state have committed, genocides, um, reappropriation of culture, um, you know, transferring populations to other locations, all of those things, they have an interest in pushing back as far as they can, 300 years, 600 years, so that the Aztecs killed the Mayans in you know, the, the 12th century rather than the 19th century, you know, and very recently. So that's what okay, I'm getting at. I understand that. I understand that. I'm still trying to figure out how, okay. So you in 686, you think it's actually year one, zero. Yeah. Because that was the last calculism. Okay. The last calendar change. Last time we need a BC. And everything after that is a lie or is everything be, at, before that a lie? After that date, humanity sort of comes out and says, wow, no more calculism. What are we going to do? Let's build civilization. Let's build cities. Let's use free energy. They did it all. They invented it all. So, when, um, and that's when Tataria. Did, when this happened, go ahead. Is that Tataria? Um, I would say um, year uh, the first. Uh, sorry, the eleventh century in Fomenko, Greece. Eleventh century is where you see the first civilizations appear of Earth. Anything before that is questionable. So, in our in our current eleventh century, which I believe should be you know year one. That's when civilization actually came out and built all the cities and everything. And within the second, within a century, in the 12th century, you had the Jesus story occur. A person that was um, that was uh, in the middle of the conflict between East and West religious belief systems, and that he caused such a ruckus that they had to, you know, kill him in such a way to sort of put down his rebellion of thought. And that this story just never went away. It was constantly uh, re reasserted and remembered and, and used for good, for bad, afterwards. So I'm, I'm jumping ahead, but Fomenko agrees the 12th century is when all of the stories from the empire came out. Jesus' story, everything else, the Crusades start, and everything up until the Reformation in, in about the 15th, starting about 15th century, when that, um, uh, well, I'm jumping ahead. So I should just get into that in the correct timeline. Uh, oh, this this website's out of date here. Do you have any questions before I get into that uh, modern human history part? Say that again. Do any I, questions yeah, before I have I a million you? questions. I have yeah. a thousand million questions. Right. One so, second, you're back. Let me get some water. All right. So, yeah, um, let me just jump into it then. Um, Fumienko, Anatoly Fumienko, the, the Russian researcher who was uh, found by um, you know, his university, given all this money, and they said, please discover our Russian history. This happened you know, after World War II when uh, Russia was trying to you know, uh, improve ties with America. Actually, no, this was um, in the 90s when USSR was falling apart and the Russians were interested in figuring out the truth of their own history. So they started looking at all the documents available in the Kremlin. Uh, Fumienko studied these documents in detail and discovered that he, that uh, using mathematics, he can come up with a chronology to determine when these events happened. And that, I mean, determine when they happened, when they're being lied about, if you follow me. Um, like he said, here's, why, here's where they took the original event from. Here's where the original event occurred. Here's the original names of the original people. And here's the timeline that they, they, sh they moved it all over to. He describes all that in detail because he found a mathematical primer to determining chronologies of stories in history. All right. So we have discussed that basically that Rome wasn't real. Yes. Rome is a reduction of the Tatarian empire. So interesting, dude. I yeah. mean, it's got to be honest with you. It's super confusing, bro. In <laughs> yeah, terms yeah. of like, because I, I just can't wrap my head around a lot of the, 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 the timeline stuff. I'm trying. Can you guys wrap your head around the timeline? 
You're you're a nerd dork, Johnny. Can you wrap around <laughs> the timeline? Not really. No. Okay. Where where do you stand with the the pyramids? Who um, built those? Well, um, I have a really cool theory on that one. Let me tell you real fast. Uh, come on, there it is. So, um, <clears throat> I call it the pyramidal empire or pyramidal empire. This is the Egyptian empire of ancient times, the one that occurred in the Bible, the one that we know to be so evil and, and the first memory of slavery on earth. It's these, this weird pyramid empire still shows today, right, on the dollar bill and so many other places, these pyramids. We don't have any explanation for them. Right there in D.C., you see the ancient Egyptian obelisk in, in the Vatican and in London. So what do all these Egyptian symbols mean and why do they appear in modern day? Um, I eventually realized that the pyramidal empire is, isn't just a bunch of artifacts that they built because they had slaves. They didn't just build pyramids because they could. Those pyramids have a purpose. Um, a lot of researchers today are saying they are energetic buildings. They can harness energy. We don't know what they are or what they're for. We can, we can already um, debunk a few claims. We know that they're not tombs. Pyramids are not tombs. They wouldn't make good tombs. They'd get too um, humid on the inside. The uh, tombs were located in a different location anyway, uh, south on the Nile. Um, and there's no inscriptions inside the pyramids describing them as tombs. In fact, there's no inscriptions at all. Um, <clears throat> these details lead us to believe that these pyramids have not been solved yet. No one knows what they are. The bigger question is how many pyramids are there? Well, there are thousands of them. Uh, the ones in Egypt aren't even the biggest ones. They aren't even the most put impressive the ones. Put the camera back on you real quick so we can see you better because right now we're looking at, at your computer screen. We'd like to see your, your face a little oh. more so we can hear you. See yeah, you yeah, as we hear you. Okay, cool. Perfect. I'm back. There we go. All right. Um, so it's interesting. If you look for pyramids, uh, you'll see that they're all over the world in the in the equator regions of the world, in the equatorial regions. They, you don't find them very north or south. Some people say there's pyramids in the poles. I don't know or think so. Uh, but is it possible? Totally possible. Um, but pyramids are built in high energetic regions. This is confirmed. Um, if you just look at the map of them, you'll find throughout the Persian um, Empire, the old Persian Empire, as described, more pyramids in Iraq, Afghanistan. If you watch that movie, Blade 3 starts out in the very first scene with this huge pyramid. They're walking up the steps in Blade 3. Um, they only show us these movies in science, these places in science fiction and so forth. So we, so it gets in our heads. So we know about them. Um, and in the meantime, they're just, they're describing the Egyptian pyramids as a wonder of the world. You see, there's a contradiction there. They're hiding the real wonders of the world. They're hiding the pyramidal empire. It, it was, it was very significant. And it wasn't just Egypt as the Bible describes. It was the entire equatorial region. It was South America too. Anywhere that you find these pyramids, they, um, they harness energy, like I said, from the tremendous amount of energy passing through plants back then, uh, which gave the buildings specific properties. Um, in the last few podcasts I was in, I actually mentioned this and got a lot of um, positive feedback that this research is being confirmed now. These pyramids are energetic devices. They're sound devices. You can transmit sound from one pyramid to the other in certain conditions. So back in primordial times and in cataclysmic times, these conditions were perfect, essentially. People could talk through the pyramids and possibly even teleport through them as well. Um, quantum um, physics describes the potential of this theory. An incubated uh, physical object could actually pass from one location to another instantaneously by being in both locations at the same time. Uh, Schrodinger's paradox. So um, Bible, Norse mythology, describe these, um, describe these regions as communication devices like the Ark and the Covenant, and in some uh, texts text actually describe them as teleportation devices as well, like the Bifrost or Bifrost of North mythology. So again, aside from that, we know that the pyramids have some kind of special energetic property. What was the deal with the slave empire? You know, how did these pyramids become a slave empire? Well, here's my theory. Um, going back as far as Atlantis, you have this potential for people to use technology for nefarious purposes to simulate deities, simulate gods. In Atlantis, you had giant emerald buildings where people had to travel to get the knowledge. The tree of knowledge was located in Atlantis. Everyone on Earth would have to go there 
to get things they wanted. Um, this became the Wizard of Oz story. But the Wizard of Oz story actually has deception at the end of it, right? There's a guy hiding behind the curtain, right? There isn't really a deity speaking to you and controlling you. If this is the case, then these pyramids were used to fake deities. And you couldn't see behind the curtains because the guy was on another pyramid in a different location. It was completely convincing. It was 100% like you were walking my, into a pyramid and speaking to a deity inside. My, my question is, how do you know that? I am, this is my theory. This is um, what I'm putting together here. Okay, but base, I mean, it, what is the basis of that take? Like, ah, what okay, makes yeah, yeah. you think that people would use these pyramids as deception? Because um, what I, um, so the, the basis of this whole theory, going back to Atlantis, is that Atlantis was a place where it's the first humans gathered knowledge, technology, okay. and you name All it. Right. And then Atlantis fell. It was just a natural thing, and the culinary configuration fell apart. Atlantis fell into the North Pole of Mars or something like that. I'm not, we don't know for sure. Um, it, it was gone. And then the people who used to run it, they sort of fell into ruin. Their technology and all that stuff, they either had a choice. Give it up. You're not in charge anymore. Give it back to the people, you know, free technology, free energy, or use that technology for nefarious purposes. Why would they do that? Well, the situation almost begged for itself to occur. The humans were having such a hard time, they were just going back to their old leaders saying, please save us from these cataclysms. The old leaders kept seeing these opportunities to continue to rule people as long as they kept a lid on the technology itself and delivered, and delivered, it, delivered the service to the people without telling them how, keeping the, the thing going. What evidence is there that this was occurring in cataclysm time. The uh, sacrifice of humans to Baal, which um, appears, should I have a picture of that here, is, um, is, a good, is a good reference for this. Let me find that picture. Oh, here we go. Nope. Isn't it? Man, not that fair. All right. So um, people used to sacrifice to a god named Baal or Moloch. And there's the references in the Bible and other places of actual human sacrifices. Uh, this sounds insane, but if you look at if you look at why this would happen, it's very simple. These Atlantis type people simply said, "God is punishing you." This well as cataclysm is for, and the notion that a creator god is punishing its creation is itself controlling technology. It might not sound like it, but it is the basis of an entirely different technology, where we are not independent and in charge of our own fate. We're we are waiting for a creator God to essentially bail us out of situations he's creating. And this story must have come from somewhere for the purposes of maintaining that slave empire. All right. All it right. Was, hold on. All right. Uh, here's what I want to do. All right. I want, because we, we, we are, you have given us a lot of info. Yeah. I need, we need to kind of like focus this on, I need step one, step two, step three, step four. Part one is, that what what is what is the first bullet point that we need to understand here about this timeline stuff that um somebody may have decided to lie as a religion okay from the earliest days and All keep right. that lie going just for the purposes of controlling everyone okay so i would agree with that that thing point two why would they do it right what's that the next question is why would they do it? What, why what would they of... do that? Yes. So, so, um, but no, 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 no. I don't want to get into that. I want to know the. T I want. I need to understand this timeline because yeah. I'm hearing a. Uh, I, I need. I need like if I if I'm point if I'm drawing this on a board, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I need to know what uh, day one, boom, 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 to where we are right now. So, yeah. so day you're saying. Day one, zero, day zero is 686. Is that what you're telling me? That was the end of all cataclysm, the beginning of human civilization. Okay, so that is day one. Yeah. And before that was what? Um, Earth cataclysm. Um, you had oh. Mars, Venus attacking Earth. Okay. And they're ta what force? The sun is energizing them to a point that it's attacking us. And is there, is there recorded history of this? Um, the Prometheus story, where Prometheus steals technology from Zeus and gives it to Earth, 
can be described as um, as exactly that. Um, Mars uh, attacking Earth and forcing humans to learn technology to survive. Okay, so that is that is so so. Now is the year six eighty six. This is first memory. Okay, right. right? Then yeah. what happens next? Let me pull up a uh, image to this uh, screen share real quick. <sighs> There. So that that Prometheus event, that Mars attacking Earth, that was the last big cataclysm. That's um, after that, there wouldn't be anything else. And Is there evidence did, of this this cataclysm in which you speak of? Is there evidence of some authors describe it and the dates specifically? Um, uh, oh God, what's the name? Um, uh, Vilikovsky describes these these um, cataclysms in detail as physical events misinterpreted into Bible stories. Okay. So we, uh, so, I mean, is there any evidence of it? Meaning that there yeah, is yeah, a right. book which states it, there's scientific well, research. Well, that's the interesting thing. You know, I'm having trouble finding the conclusions of all this, okay. but I'm having an easy time coming up with them. For example, a cathedral. Yeah. You know, where's get that name from? It's a cathode, right? It's a, it's a specifically designed building to receive energy from the sky in a safe way. Um, if it, if this Prometheus event is as described, Mars constantly attacking Earth with electricity, then the humans at the time would have seen a, a right-in-their-face example of how physics work, and all they had to do was change the shape of their buildings to accommodate. Mars attacked Earth nine times in close encounters. Jano Cook is an author that goes into detail about what these encounters were like and that it was Mars. Um, and at, at the end of all of this, you have these cathedral structures all over the earth protecting us from some kind of, um, so, you know, we don't know what, we don't know why they're built. We don't know why they're built in this shape. So these cathedrals are evidence of something. Okay. So. Do you think the, the cathedrals are the same thing as the pyramids? They both get energy and electricity or that's a whole different thing. We're talking about evolution. Um, the first pyramids were done in a stable, a collinear configuration, and then a nonlinear configuration. They're all stable and had a lot of energy. The ones we're in today, um, the orbits we're in today, are, are far apart, and there's not you know huge energy passing passing through. Um, the pyramids don't work anymore, but the cathedrals are still capable of receiving light uh, lightning storms. We don't have any major lightning storms anymore today, but. Um, in the Prometheus event, you had planet-wide lightning storms. All right, so we have uh, we have six eighty six is day one. Then what happens next? How do the how do these Saturn worshippers start to begin to take over? Well, now we're describing the motive, the nefarious motive of the deep state to actually continue to do this slave empire plan into modern times after their empire is gone. Why would they try to bring it back? That's the biggest question of all. Now, I believe that if you look at Mars as a breakaway human civilization and you see that they had the, the, the bad end of this, well, we had the good end here on Earth. We survived the cataclysm, got to live in paradise. They live on a planet that has almost no water and no resources. However, they live on a planet with a tremendous amount of technology resources. Iron and all kinds of valuable metals are lying right there on the surface. And they are capable of being a few hundred years ahead of us in technology. So the question uh, comes up, would, could they use this technology to make their experience better, to receive resources from Earth? Um, if um, if they just tell Earth the truth, you know, hey, we're that empire, here's some free technology, Earth might decide not to give them resources. Now, what kind of resources are we talking about? Food, but also women. On Mars, you might have trouble with being able to give birth. It's a it's it's not a real planet. It's a, a primordial leftovers of the of the birth of Earth. It's um, so it has a lot of problems. Interesting. It's there's right. so, so the, much. So people this. on Mars, if you look at it from their perspective, why don't they, they come might, back? If it if I'm it's sorry? if it's so awful, why don't they just come back here? Well, that's part of the 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 sad story here. The ones that live there, they can't live here. Uh, they can't survive on our sun. They they can't deal with our bacteria. They don't look like us. Uh, you name it. They, they're they kind of at a loss because they believe that we are the beneficiaries of this planet and they want some of those resources. So they saw over the entire Earth's history this this potential to 
to receive resources through a slave empire. Just keep giving us resources every, you know, through the plantations, through uh, human trafficking, just all of those kinds of things that we do see today. We see 200 years of plantations. We see tons of human trafficking. Do is any of these resources, are they supplying Mars? Because if they are, then you essentially explain why, what their motive is for being evil this whole time. It's because they don't want to, they don't want to die. They want to survive, uh, deal with the harsh conditions of Mars. They want, they want something better. How, how do you suppose they get to Mars if they are trafficking women and resources to Mars? Uh, um, in in the ancient times, it was easy to travel because of the energy, and now they, it's hard to do it because you need a tremendous amount of energy. So right. where is the location on Earth that has the most energy all at once? We have CERN, the biggest, um, oh, the biggest collider man. on Earth. And if you look at CERN, you'll see that there's a project in works right now to make another one that's seven times bigger than the current one. And this is the most expensive human project in history. So first question ask, why do they spend all that money if they don't really know if atom smashing is going to produce anything? It didn't, right? Talked about the God particle and then nothing came out of it. It's a huge waste of money. But if CERN is actually something else entirely, a teleportation device that requires a tremendous amount of energy to, to, to use, and it takes them, you know, 50 years to build and stuff like that, that's how they get to Mars and back. Okay. Is the object we see, we're told, is Mars in our sky? Is that Mars? Yeah, it's a, it's a planet. Okay. That's, I mean, you did have a guy come on, Alex Jones, and talk about how um, how There's they slave have colonies. slave colonies on, on, on Mars. I mean, right. and dude, Alex Jones is always like an head of everything. Yeah. I just, I mean, like, it's just, you have a lot of complex thoughts that I, I need to sit down and... And we just kind of got to put them in line because yeah, there's so know, much. Just, it's okay. No, you did great. Dude, you did great. This was <laughs> a very fun conversation. It was just a, a lot of information to digest. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's right. a lot of information. Because you can't understand each individual aspect of it without understanding the, the 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 entire lie that is human history you know first and oh it, yeah 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 so, it, so I it mean, takes like, forever to get into it you know saturn worship always was described as saturn was in the sky like the sun there was a time where they were equally like that it was thought as the second sun yes and that's why this group of people worshiped, worshiped saturn that's why Jews have um, their holiest day is Saturday, right? But starting in the evening, right? In the evenings when that sun comes out, the it's mornings so when soul comes out. Dude, Saturday, so interesting. Saturn day. Saturn. Oh. I'm telling you, it's all there. <laughs> it's all there. It's been in our face this whole time. It has been in our face the whole time. So if we're talking history, starts basically. You're saying. What, 1,500 years ago? Uh, human history start, um, started about 1,000 years ago, and cataclysm history uh, with shorter years goes on for another 2,000-something years, two, two 3,000 years See, of cataclysm. that's where I, I, I got to wrap my head around that. Right. And that's the part. And it's not you. It's I'm dumb. <laughs> so I know that. Like, I'm a dumb person. I oh, it's person. not that. They've taught us everything we need to know to not think this way. It's hard to break through. No, I understand that. I am under. It's a very complex thing, and there is this small group of people that have been controlling everything. Now, do you believe in interdimensional beings? No, I'm sorry, I don't. But you know what? If it's the case, at least I'll say this: I don't believe the internet, interdimensional beings, five G D, or time travel, or any of those kinds of factors have played a significant role in all of this stuff we're seeing. Not significant. If any of that stuff exists, okay, but not didn't change history. It didn't affect anything. Now, archons. We hear a lot about archons. In the Bible, yeah. they talk about archons. Where are archons from? Well, uh, archon means leadership, right? From the old empires, it's a term for leaders. And um, in modern days, we're, archons are described in science fiction media considerably and other, other like occult media. We get a lot of clues, but we don't know the technology behind them. Starcraft has um, archons. They merge together to form archons. Uh, the merging is a significant part of the archon. Um, two beings that, that were separate beings becoming one person. That's the most uh, uh, definitive way to define archon. 
Um, <clears throat> now, what do I believe they are? Well, I've been looking at this for a long time. You know, not like three years, not a long time, but um, how do you change a person into another person? George W. Bush, for example, seems to be a totally different person in the last 20 years. Um, th- uh, well, it's um, possible that if you give somebody a blood transfusion from another being, what you're doing is you're combining two people together through the blood. The um, religions, several religions believe this is the case, like uh, I'm spacing on all the names of the religions. Um, the, the book Dracula, Bram Stoker's Dracula, the original one, if you look at it, it has blood transfusion as the, as the primary method of mind control. It talks about how mind control occurs during sunrise and sunset for people who have transfusion, you know, have someone else's blood in them. They can talk to each other during these periods of time. All kinds of details like that. If, if that's the case, then archons that we're seeing today, celebrities that were once one way and now they're totally different, they might have been experienced some kind of blood transfusion archon technology, and they are literally a different person in the same body. That's just my guess. Damn. I mean, it's interesting. You got clones, right? People saying this person's a clone, what, they're just a blood transfusion? It's just mm-hmm. interesting to think. So you're saying there's more more empires than Tataria. There were, there were empires before Tataria. Well, they, they break up the Tatarian Empire memory into all kinds of other ones. The Persian Empire, the um, Roman Empire, of course, the Ottoman Empire in modern times. But the Ottoman Empire was still part of the Tatarian Rusort Empire. It was a vassal state. So there was only one empire in history. It was the Rusort Tatarian Empire. And then there was one slave empire, which I, I agree that that also is an empire, but it's of a very different nature. Rusort Empire was... Um, they didn't conquer anyone. They didn't have slaves. It was all banned. They allowed everyone to keep their own belief systems. They um, rarely did taxes. Taxes started with the crusade. The slave empire, it's all about taxes. You got to believe in our God. You got to worship him as the savior, your savior, because he's resurrected. You have to do baptism. You have to do circumcision. You have to do all of these control rituals. So, yeah, that, that could be described as an empire, too, of a very different nature. It is interesting and very complex yeah it's super complex dude as it should be right real history should be very complex the most complex story of all of all of them it's very hard to understand dude it's <laughs> very hard to I, it's not that you're you make sense it's just like because it's like you're trying to run it through this program that is built on faulty data yes you know what I'm saying? Like, you're trying to understand what he's saying through this prism of how you've been raised, which yes. he does not understand any of that. Because I still see 2,000 years. Like, every time he's t- every time he's talking about it, I somehow try to put it in the 2,000 years. Yeah. So I'm like, how, where do I put this? Where does it fit? And you're like, it d- doesn't fit. That's why, that's why we're going to keep referring to these centuries as they're officially referred to, 11th, 12th century, because once you start to change that, you get lost. <laughs> I mean... I mean, if you just took a regular person and had them listen to this, their head would explode (laughs) because they can't even come to grips with that. So I want to end on this. What are reset cities? Um, Well, let's say you did conquer Earth. Let's say there was some kind of event in the past that completely reset civilization. That seems to be the premise of the mud flood topic of debate. Um, Whatever this mud flood was in the 19th century, um, buried the old world as it existed, and they just started over with a new world, new history, new everything, Latinization, full Latinization. Um, so if someone was to do that, if you were to rule the world, you would, you would want each location to be resettable. This means anything goes wrong, people rise up against you, discover the truth or anything goes wrong at all, you want them to, you want to cause cataclysm on them and just reset their leaders and put everything back in order the way it was. We see this occur in Japan all the time. Like three or four years, they have another tsunami. They have a, a nuclear explosion, or they have a tsunami and a nuclear explosion at the same time. <laughs> and then you get all these people pouring out at the government saying, you did it. This is your fault. They, they fire everyone. They start over. The people that should have been fired stay in there. These are tactics of resettable civilizations. We see this in all cities, in all civilizations, not just in Japan. In India, you got 
cities built in tsunami zones in California and across the planet, really. You got cities built on fault lines, built right there on fault lines. And they say, oh, we didn't know about the fault lines when we built Los Angeles. You know, come on. That's just insane. It's like they never bothered to talk to any of the people that lived there this whole time. Um, and so anyway, um, it, it, you know, Hawaii is having recent volcanoes. Um, places in the south like Texas and Louisiana are hit by menacing hurricanes. These are resettable cities, resettable populations that anytime they go too far, they get punished. Um, it's just the most nefarious plan of all. And we, we have to consider the possibility, even if that's not how it's really been set up, we have to look at it as possible. That these cities are being set to, um, that they are basically used as if they get out of line, they get punished. Right. Exactly. They're like set to fail. Yes. Um, skyscrapers meant to come down, even in the guise of a terrorist attack. Most buildings can be burned down um, when compared to 18th century buildings, which are mostly fireproof, um, made of brick and, and meant to live to stay forever. Uh, most of our houses actually can be destroyed by a flood. We, we are not living in, you know, sustainable cities today. Do Very you resettable. think we're in a reset right now? Right. Good question. Um, things have been happening weird. People are accusing the, the, the vaccine of potentially being a depopulation program. If that was the case, if they're looking at stuff like the Spanish flu as previous depopulation programs, then what we're dealing with is, yes, we're living in a series of resets. We're in the most recent one. An analogy for this, a perfect analogy for this, is the Matrix movies, um, as, of course, they were predictive programming designed to make us think of these terms only in a science fiction, so they can always say it's fiction, um, but actually is all right there. Um, the second movie said that they're in the sixth iteration of the matrix that there was five before and that they all failed and all of those people had to be wiped out again and, and, and brainwashed and reasserted. And then right. now yeah. we're in our sixth iteration, right? We're trying it this way with the choice matrix. And if it is to fail, just like in the second movie, guess what? This big army is going to show up and just wipe you out and reset you again. Um, and it's going to be something that they, it's like a trigger they could pull anytime they want. They, it's not like they have to figure Who out how to reset. They? It's all designed they? that way. Who are they? In the Matrix, they were the machines. In real life, they are the deep state. And whoever you define the deep state to be. Interesting, dude. Okay, so let me ask you something. Why do so many people believe in God, the creator? That's a good question. Um, I think if you look at the Rusord Empire, you'll find this whole this eclectic civilization that didn't. And then you find this reformation in the West that the Rusward Emperor tried to put down in the Inquisition, which failed. The Inquisition failed. And after the Inquisition failed, everyone said, um, we're going to believe in whatever we want in our creator God, and you can't stop us. So th this seems to be like the makings of why a lot of people believe in the creator God, because they went to the Inquisition. But that, that doesn't convince me today in the 20th century why all the people in my life seem to believe him. Uh, my family I was born and raised Jewish. It's just like it's pervasive. So there has to have been some event in recent modern history that reasserted this belief system. And I believe that was the mud flood event of the 19th century. He essentially had people causing trouble, Napoleon, about to free the world and change everything. And then he had somebody had to reverse everything he did and convince everyone that what he did was so wrong that God came up, God showed up and punished them, destroying entire cities, wiping airships out of the sky. Um, you know, melting buildings and kingdoms and, and, and destroying, you know, you got it. And after the event, after the mud flood, reset cities, trains, orphan trains, repopulating America, Europe, even Australia, places like that. And all of those locations are being taught Christianity, Buddhism, um, all, of the, all of the monotheistic religions. So all of those people being taught this religion in the 19th century leading into the 20th century had every reason to believe there was a creator God. He was really mad at humanity again, for some reason, because look at that mud flood event. Look at what it, somebody did to us. Dude, am I tripping out? Is that cat constantly walking back there? I hmm. feel like it's walked back there three or four. Speaking of the matrix, matrix. I feel like I'm having a fucking deja vu. Deja vu. Yep. That's some crazy oh, yeah, shit. Ari, what out. is Definitely. your IQ? I don't know. I haven't checked. My wife's IQ is higher though. Okay. 
So do you believe in any God? Um, I believe that the planets were the gods, and at the time they should be revered, and now they're all gone. They were replaced by the one God, the sun. If you really believe that the sun is a God, that's fine. But to me, the sun, our sun in the solar system, is a giver of life, energy, you name it. It has, it's created everything we know, and you can you can worship the sun if you want. Most There's actually plenty of res- worship uh, sun-worshipping references indigenous cultures around the world. So that's as far as I would go, is to revere these huge objects in our solar system as, um, well, sub-logos, definitely, not creator of the universe or anything like that, but the biggest things around. You're supposed to, you're supposed to regard the biggest things around. Interesting. What an interesting mind you have, Ari. <laughs> Thank you. You're very... Ari, if uh, our guests want to find you, where can they find you? Uh, just go to paradigmthreat.net. Just go to that website. You'll find my Discord link. You can talk to us on Discord. And you can check out all of this research in much more detail than that. How many people do you have here. on your Discord, Ari? Uh, I think 189 is what I saw yesterday. Let me pull up right here. And it is 190. Wow. That's great, person. dude. Congratulations. <laughs> well, thank you. Send me a link. I'll make sure to link it into our. Oh, I see it. So uh, we will. Um, definitely yeah, get that out there to all the people so they can see you. Ari, thank you so much for joining us, dude. We really appreciate yeah. you bring up some very interesting uh, ideas, and I'm open-minded to all them. It's just very complex, yep. and uh, it's, a, it's a lot of information, brother. Yeah, it's the kind of thing that it should is. be in a lecture series. You know what I mean? Not, yeah. I mean, it's hard to cover it in, <laughs> in an, an hour? hour on a podcast. I yeah. mean, it's really deep stuff. It is, yeah. It's layered. And I'm trying to make another video. I have a script written out. Everything's just no, uh, life dude, stuff. Sorry, right, listen. Is. You did great. You did great. It's just <laughs> like I'm stupid, and I need, I need to be able to digest. Well, you're trying to get a whole timeline of four thousand years in an hour. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. just a too much to talk about. It's a lot. No, it is a lot, man. It's just like. Bam! Then this happened. Then this happened. Then this happened. Yeah, everything begs a question. You know, you yes. get to one thing, and then there's another question. See, there's another a million questions, yeah. question, and it like, but that is really what this realm we live in is, man. It's no, just yeah. complex shit, dude. All right, Ari, thank you so much for joining us, guys. Thank you for joining us. Hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you have this thing figured out, please, please tweet me, Instagram me, email me, ba- break it down. Uh, because it's a very complex thing. If you're in Dallas, we hope to see you this weekend. If you're in OKC, we hope to see you this weekend. Holla at your boy. Thanks for joining us. You guys are the best. Have a great week. We, 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 we go deep, homeboy. Aaron, open your mind. Drink from the fountain of knowledge. There's lizard people everywhere. That's some interdimensional shit. <laughs> Wake up, Aaron. This is only the beginning. Dude, you just blew my mind. Tim foil hack, tin foil hack, tin foil hack.